Hi guys and welcome to Escape We Watch Reviews. My name is Steve and today we're going to be reviewing the Sherwood Commander. So I was sent this prototype watch for review. I will be sending the watch on to the next reviewer. I believe it is going to be the Town Watch channel here on YouTube. So make sure to check out his channel. Uh, I'll be leaving a link down in the video description for the SherwoodWatches.com website. That's where you can pick this up on pre-order. Um, it's not quite available for purchase everywhere, but uh, yeah, pre-order. It should be shipping in August, I believe is what they say. So the current retail price for this watch is 575 US dollars. That's before any taxes or VAT or coupons or discounts or anything. They are giving a pre-order discount of 50 pounds if you order early. So take that into account if you do plan on getting this watch. The watch is available in three different colorways, all sport a beautiful sunburst dial. I think that green one would be my pick. It would be really hard to choose, but yeah, they do all look really good, but that green one just looks awesome. The watch case is made of 316L stainless steel. It has a sapphire crystal, screw down crown, screw down case back, 200 meters of claimed water resistance, and the watch is powered by the Miyota 9039 automatic movement. And you know, normally I don't show the box here, but uh, I just have to show it. Um, you know, I, I, typically on this channel, I don't focus on the boxes because they're usually trash. But uh, this one is actually really cool. Reminds me a lot of that Big R Brands box here. Uh, nice and shiny, glossy wooden box. I believe it's wooden. Got your Shearwood branding on the top here in gold. It's got a nice gold buckle down here as well. And then you flip it open and it's really just bright orange leather uh, you kind of open up these things here and this is where all your accessories will be and obviously your watch will be sitting right here um, so yeah it was really a, a very cool packaging um, not what i really expected uh, but it's it seems to be pretty high quality from what i can see um, yeah again i don't put too much into packaging but that's a pretty cool box i, I like it so i just thought i would show you guys and uh, yeah we can get back to the review so this watch was fully backed on Kickstarter a while ago, and now it's pre-order time with shipments expected to be starting in August of 2023. You can see it is British designed, and it's designed after with kind of elements of Sherwood Forest and Robin Hood and his men. And um, yeah, I guess the guy who designed this kind of lives right next door to Sherwood Forest. So it's kind of cool that he's bringing his hometown into the design of this thing. I, I don't think it's overdone. Uh, it's a very nice and elegant diver, which is what it's supposed to be. But also, you know, it's got 200 meters of water resistance. It's got a screw down crown. It's got a Miyota movement. It's going to be able to take a beating as well. Uh, and also just kind of look nice at the same time. So um, yeah, for 575 US dollars, it's not a cheap watch. Uh, but I have to say, it is really nice. It looks really cool. It's an original design. Uh, it's got nice specs. And yeah, I, I'm going to leave it up to you guys if you think it's worth your money. So I say we get into this full review. But before we do, doing a quick wrist check today. Just got this one in yesterday. This is the Octopus Kraken. This is their titanium 38, 39 millimeter diver. Uh, really cool. Coming to the channel very soon. Yeah, so let's talk about the dimensions on this thing. We have a bezel diameter of 40 millimeters, a case thickness of 12.3 millimeters, 20 millimeter lug width, lug tip to lug tip of 47.5 millimeters. Total length with the male protruding end links is just under 51 millimeters. And sized up for my seven and a half inch wrist with an unknown number of links removed. It weighs about 147 grams. So this is kind of definitely in that sweet spot, 40 millimeters by 47. Uh, it does have a little bit longer with the male end links, but I think they curve down nice enough that it, it's not a big deal. Uh, it's nice and thin too at 12.3, I believe is what it said. Um, so yeah, it's a nice size diver. I like it. Uh, I think the proportions on it are very nice as well. You do have good turn down to the lugs there. Um, yeah, it wears great. I'm going to go outside right now and throw it on my wrist for you. And here we are on my seven and a half ish interest. And as you can see, it wears really good. I like the size of this thing. Pretty thin for what it is. Good short lug to lug with some nice curve down. And yeah, I think it wears pretty good. You got lots of light play off of the crystal and off that bezel insert. And overall, I think it looks pretty darn good. And popping out in some direct sunlight here, you can see there's a slight sunburst to the dial, which is really nice to see. Uh, it does, it, I mean, it's really subtle, but uh, it looks pretty good out in the sunlight here. You can see there's no problem reading this dial. Plenty of anti-reflective coating. It does a good job of keeping the reflections down. Yeah, I think it looks good. But I'm going to go throw this on some straps and we'll get back to this review. And here we are on a black Tropic strap. This is from Straps Co. And, I mean, a black diver is going to look good on pretty much everything. So, 
yeah, uh, obviously this is uh, this is one of those combos that just works really well. I like it. And here we are on a very old vintage leather strap. And again, this thing looks pretty good. Always like the look of leathers on divers. So uh, yeah, I will say that these straps have been a little bit of a tight fit. They've all fit okay so far, but any thicker than this, if you have a thicker leather strap or something like that, it's probably gonna hit the case. So just something to keep in mind. Uh, this one just barely fits though. And here we are on a green canvas strap again, wears really nice. And the green and the black has always worked for me, so yeah, no, no surprise, it looks good. And onto the pass through straps. This is a purline strap, one layer underneath the watch and still sitting really nice on the wrist. These things are so comfortable for the summer, especially here in Florida, where very breathable straps and they kind of stretch a little bit. So yeah, really happy with these things. But yeah, that is, uh, that is looking pretty good. And lastly, here we are on a black and gray striped nylon strap. This is one that is just from a Pagani design, uh, but I think that does look pretty good. Two layers underneath the watch, and still, it still sits pretty nice and low. So yeah, this is a, a good combo. All right, let's go back inside and let's get back to this review. All right, so let's talk about the case finishing. And case finishing on this is done pretty nicely. Again, this was designed as a desk diver, so it's gonna be a little bit more fancy going to have more polished surfaces so it is a mixture of brushed and polished you can see here you do have really nice vertical brushing on the tops of the lugs here but then it transitions down to a polished surface there on the case sides here fully polished you can see this one has been used and abused being a prototype that's not unexpected but from what i can see the polishing seems to be done really nicely transitions also seem to be done really nicely so i, I don't see any issues with that at all uh, working our way to the crown side here you have an unguarded but signed crown here it's a kind of a bead blasted i guess looking crown a little bit of brushing going on there but really nice and grippy and it's a good size you do have that arrowhead there which we're going to see from time to time throughout this watch uh, you know that's just giving that's just a throwback to robin hood and his arrows and um, but yeah really cool logo i like it a lot and i think everything looks pretty nice on this thing i've got no complaints with the the brushing or the polishing from what i can see um yeah very happy with it flipping it over to the case back here you have a circular brushing on the case back it's a screw down case back simple notches to get your tool into if you need to a uh, little spec sheet around the outside but the start of the show is the sherwood forest oak tree uh, really a very cool design it's a nice deep engraving as well but nice and soft and smooth um, I had no issues on wrist as far as comfort goes. I, I didn't even notice it. So very happy with it. I think it looks really cool though. Um, circular brushing on the bottom of the lugs here and these bottom edges, they've been honed nicely. So everything is very comfortable. I've got no complaints with it. I think it looks good. I think it feels good. I like it a lot. All right, let's talk about the bezel on this thing. So we'll start with the bezel insert. It's a very minimal bezel insert done on purpose again, desk diver style, but still functional. Uh, it has markings for all the five minute increments here. And then your first 20 minutes is fully loomed there as well. So this is a fully loomed bezel insert. We'll get to the loom shot in just a little bit, just a black insert, uh, but nicely done. Nice and crisp engravings and printing. Everything is done really nicely. I see no issues with that at all. The bezel itself, it's a stainless steel bezel. Circular brushing on the top and kind of a brushed tooth design here, but really nicely done. And you can see here, it kind of sits down inside the lugs a little bit. So uh, it's a really interesting look to it. And I think it works pretty good. It's plenty grippy for, you know, being such a, sh a short bezel. It's very grippy. Uh, the resistance is very nice as well. The action is a 120 click unidirectional. You can see here, I mean, there's absolutely no play in this thing at all. Uh, very solid bezel in all directions. Very happy with that. Um, I'll let you listen to the clicks. They are nice and deep and thunking sounding. So hopefully you guys can hear them nicely. So yeah, 120 clicks. And again, resistance is nice and solid. It might be just a, just a hair. You know, if they could knock like 10% off of it, I think it would be a little bit better. But um, it's one of those things where I'm, I'm not upset by it at all. Um, it's still easy enough to grip and I haven't ever knocked it. So uh, it's a really good bezel. Very, very happy with it. Very satisfying to click. Um, yeah, it's very, a, a very tooly bezel. I'll say that. Um, but yeah, it, it feels good. It looks good. I've got no complaints. Now let's talk about the crystal real quick. We'll test it for a sapphire. So it is a sapphire crystal and it is a really nice sapphire crystal. Double domed, just ever so slightly double domed as you can see there. 
uh, yeah, really nice and clear and crisp. It's got blue and a reflective coating on the underside. Um, yeah, and they've got plenty of it. Sometimes when you don't put enough on it, it can be a bit of a distraction just because it's grabbing more reflections than uh, like a flat sapphire would. Um, but yeah, they did a good job on this one. I'm happy with it. I see zero issues with it. All right, let's get close and we'll talk about the dial on this thing. So the dial is done really nicely. It is a non-glossy, but a really nice sunburst dial there. You can see kind of that texture grain in the sunburst there. It looks really good. Uh, I'm very happy with the dial. You do have a kind of a sloped uh, minute track around the outside there. And it's done really nicely. I see no issues with that. That's that's done nicely. You have applied indices at all the hour markers. Kind of a traditional dive style watch with circular and baton indices for for every hour marker except the 12 o'clock. Again, we're seeing that arrowhead. And I mean, these things are applied very nicely, nice and big and bold. They don't get lost on the dial. Um, yeah, they look great. They, they're very happy with that. Uh, the handset they use on this, just your typical sword hands. I don't know if that was a, uh, a conscious decision by him, just, you know, based on what I remember of the Robin Hood series. You know, there's some swords in there, but um, yeah, really nicely sized hands reaching right out to the minute track. Um, nice and big and bold, really nicely, and nice and polished, as you can see here. They did a very good job on this. I'm very happy with it. That second hand, again, reaches right out to the minute track there, and it's kind of got that orange it, it's it's definitely not red like this text down here uh, it might be coming across as an orange but yeah it's definitely a red text it doesn't quite match uh, maybe they'll fix that during the final you know final run of watches but it really doesn't look that bad at all uh, but really a cool seconds hand design with that arrowhead and then you've got some feathers here as the counterbalance i think it all just works really good you do have your british design there down at the six o'clock position and again everything is just done really nicely all the hour indices and the hands they use vgw9 loom so you got really nice just kind of a pure white loom color during the day and then that ice blue glow at night i'm going to pop up a loom shot right now here you can see it against a couple other watches in the collection kind of micro brandish watches like this one and uh yeah it holds its own i mean it's really a nice solid application of bgw9 there's no patchiness that i can see it lasts all night long. Um, yeah, it's it's really good loom. You're going to be happy with it. All right, so let's talk about the movement in this thing. So the movement is the Miyota 9039 High Beat Automatic Movement. 28,800 beats per hour, 41 hours of power reserve. It hacks, it hand winds, it does everything you need it to do. This movement has been around for a very long time. It's reliable. It's accurate. Here's how mine has been running. And, you know, this is probably the worst one that I've seen. Most of them run within two seconds a day so uh, i suspect the one that you get in your watch will be much more accurate than this one even though even so this one is not bad at plus 10 seconds so uh, yeah not a big deal but the movement itself i've had no complaints with it uh, it does have the unidirectional winding rotor that's my only real uh, gripe with the movement i guess but this case is solid enough where it's really not been an issue for me. I haven't heard it or felt it or anything like that like I normally do. So, um, yeah, no complaints there. The movement is operated by this nice 3 o'clock screw-down crown. Again, signed really nice and grippy crown as well. Very happy with that. Uh, I've had a couple watches where, where these crowns have been pretty sharp uh, and uncomfortable. This one is not sharp at all. Very nicely done. Nice solid pop-out from the Miyota movement. And your first position here is your hand winding, nice and smooth. Second position, hacks the movement. So this is a no date movement, no ghost date position, which is, again, really nice to see. And then everything functions as it should. This is where you set your time. Pushing it in engages the movement, doesn't jump hands or anything like that. It's a nice solid, it's a premium movement. Um, you know, these movements are great, and you're, you're going to be really happy with it. Um, yeah, nothing else to say. It's a good movement, good crown action. I'm happy. All right, so let's talk about the bracelet on this thing. So the bracelet, uh, if you guys remember my Phoebus Voyager review from just a while back, I'm pretty sure this is the exact same bracelet. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it just reminds me a lot of that bracelet. So it's 20 millimeters and it tapers down to 18 millimeters at the clasp. It is five solid links here. So, so it is brushing on the outside and polishing on the inside. Nicely finished in my opinion. Uh, yeah, pretty happy with that. Usually on these small links here, they kind of skimp a little bit. They didn't do that. I think it's it's done nicely. You do have male protruding end links, which I know some people are not going to be a, a fan of. 
Uh, but I think these things, they curve down and I think they're short enough where it's not really an issue. Uh, the fitment inside the lug opening here is nice and tight as well. Uh, you do have just a slight mismatch right here, this little raised bit there. So these end links, they could match the case just a little bit better. Uh, but really, it's it's not that big of a deal. Uh, but overall, very happy with the bracelet on this thing. Solid end links as well. Um, they do use a pin and collar system, I believe. I didn't have to size this thing. It came sized right out of the box for me, thankfully. But uh, yeah, it looks like to be a pin and collar system. So um, yeah, no issues with that. They're a little bit more finicky than the you know, screw links or something. But um, yeah, they, they, they're not going to back out like a screw link might back out. Um, so yeah, I'm okay with that. Uh, working our way to the clasp here, you have a Shearwood branded clasp. Again, this seems like the same clasp that was on the Voyager, which is, I mean, it's not a bad thing at all. Um, brushed on the top, polished on the sides, polished big chamfers here, three levels of micro adjust, just your two button pusher here. So it keeps it nice and thin. That's a very thin uh, buckle. Um, so pretty happy with that. It's a nice substantial outer shell too. It doesn't feel cheap. Uh, the insides are fully milled as you can see here. Nice tight tolerances. Everything functions as it should. There's no like on the fly adjustment or anything like that, which is a little bit of a letdown, but um, yeah, on a watch like this, kind of expected. So overall with the bracelet, I'm very satisfied. Everything is done really nicely. It's a nice fluid bracelet. This bottom edge here has been nicely rounded as well. It's super comfortable on my wrist. Uh, yeah, there's not much negative to say about the bracelet. It's, it's, it's a good one. So there you go, guys. That is the Sherwood Commander. I think it's a really nice option. Uh, it's kind of a desk diver, like I said. It's just over 12 millimeters thick. It curves down nicely. It wears nicely. The bracelet is nice. Um, yeah, if you're looking for kind of this dressier dive watch that you can kind of take anywhere and go anywhere, this is a good option. Uh, you know, you got to be okay spending close to $600 for this watch. Um, you know, this thing sold out on Kickstarter, and I think it's going to sell out pretty quickly on the website as well. So, um, yeah, he put together a really cool watch. Uh, I like the aspects of the Sherwood Forest and, you know, kind of right next door to him, uh, kind of bringing in those elements with the arrows and stuff. I think it's a really cool branding, uh, really cool watch in general. And, yeah, I'm pretty satisfied with it. Keep an eye out for this on the Town Watch channel as well because that's where this one's going. Uh, sadly, I do have to send it out. But, uh, yeah, I think that's it for me, guys. Thanks a lot for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. See ya.